Bagujika Kalsa, Bagujiki Fateh, thank you for joining today's webinar hosted by the SIC Research Institute. Today's class is a part of the live series Anansai, Way to Bliss. I would also like to inform everyone that this course today, uh, or sorry, this course in general has been shortened to 12, 12 weeks as we have been able to cover the material at a much quicker rate than expected. Our last class next week on July 23rd will be an exclusive session for only those enrolled in the class with Sikri's creative director, Inikor. Through this session, Inikor will share a special personal reflection on Anand Saib, detailing her relationship to the Bani of Anand Saib, Sikhi as a lived experience. Today's class uh, will begin with a shorter lecture followed by extra time for Q&A. Uh, including those questions that have been asked in previous classes and have yet to be addressed. Um, but also any new questions are welcome, so please drop them in the chat box and be sure to include your name and city. And now I would like to introduce you to our instructor. Surinder Balsing is a researcher in Sikh studies. He works at the Sikh Research Institute, where he develops curriculum, presentations, and research papers on Sikh history and culture. Please welcome Surinder Ball. Vaiguji ka kalsa, Vaiguji ki fate. Welcome to the 11th week of the online Ananda course. Today we will cover bodies 39 and 40, and we will do a review of the key points uh, discussed in the Bani and see what are the things that we need to do to lead a blissful life. Uh, let's quickly uh, look at body 35 through 38. So uh, body 34, even before 35, discussed Man Chao Pia Prabhakunsune, if you remember, and basically gave a, gave a glimpse into the signs of the uh, you know, arrival or the imminent union uh, as the person walks uh, further on to the path shown by the guru. So there, are, there you have signs of, you know, Barney actually moving towards closure. And in that spirit, uh, body 35 uh, again moves back to asking body, okay, that's your ideal. Uh, what did you actually do? You know, body started with asking, what did you do to experience that bliss that you're basically looking for? You were taking bliss and happiness, but you were actually doing things exactly the opposite of that, or you're not actually doing what you needed to do to do that. Uh, you know, next line as Chinhar Tera Rachan Rachya, Sohar Manna Usaya, you know, the one who lies at the core of your existence, who is your creator, you did not enshrine that creator in your in your heart, in your mind. And who is the actual source of uh, bliss? How do you propose to achieve that bliss without the Karl Burke? That the idea of same pretense that connects to the first body. So <clears throat> that's what it said. And then the body also offered a solution in the next lines. It said, Gur Prasad, you know, again going to the first body, Gur Prasadi Harman Vasya, you know, Purab Likya Paya. When the Guru bestows grace, uh, then the remover Hari Manivasya comes to dwell in your heart. That's how, when the source of bliss ultimately comes into your heart, that's when you uh, experience bliss. Kaya Nanaka, you know, Kesri Parwan Hua, oh body, you know, since the body was addressing to the body, it says that, you know, oh, oh body, remember your acceptance, your success lies in you being accepted. You know, Kesri uh, Parwan Hua, but their acceptance is when. You know, Jin Sadjini Sadguru Samchitlaya, who only those bodies are accepted who attach their love, who are attached to or who listen to or walk by uh, the instruction of the Guru. What body said. Uh, body 36 then moved on to uh, Netro, you know, eyes. The point of the entire body was to use the eyes to see everything as divine. Arbin, Avarna Dekho Koi, as the you know, last phrase of the line says, you know. Uh, know that you know everything that you see wherever your gaze falls everything is divine just know that you're able to develop the perspective of seeing the divine everywhere and everything then know that you know uh, at the end it said you know 
कहे नानक के नेत्र अंध से सतगुरु मिलिए नानक सेस दैट दीज आईज वर ब्लाइंड लाइक विदाउट दी विजन ऑफ द गुरु बट वेन दी the call of the guru's wisdom was put in the eyes they became dipped they become the sight became blind and that's when i started looking seeing everything through the perspective of the uh, guru's wisdom and that's when i actually started seeing everything as one divine and that's when my eyes figuratively actually opened and that's how i got nearer to experience experiencing the place <coughs> in body 37 uh it discussed so the thing moved from sharir body from eyes to the shravans the ears and it says oh and it gave, gave an, an emphatic statement as a matter of fact and says e sarvano mere ho sach hai sunne nu pathai as a fact that you know what just know this uh oh my ears you were sent by the true to listen you were sent to do your job was to listen it's very clear it's very emphatic listen to what and when the in the later line says suno sadbani it's suni mantan hariya hua you know listen to the eternal true eternal utterance implying you know gurbani that's what you were sent to listen so the body clearly defines for the ears what to hear the intent was to hear the true utterance satbani uh, gurbani guru's bani but it is stuck in you know listening to stuff that it leads to other love in life like office uh, and you know slander and other stuff and tasting things that give you bodily pleasure and you're just limited to that because because of which you're not you're not able to develop that you know propensity that liking for the divine taste and hence the hence your sufferings and lastly <clears throat> in body 38 you know the body starts moving towards Con conclusion closure and in the context of the functioning of our body it again reminds us you know of our real purpose but in a way that also informs us that uh this is also our body is also our vehicle to uniting with ekanka because there is no liberation as i've already mentioned or freedom after death as other traditions believe there no freedom after death if you are not going to be free or united uh while you're alive uh, then you're not going to be and the tool uh, to actually make that possible to unite with kaunkar is the body and at other places in gurbani you know uh, body is equated to uh, a tejan horse or a mare which is used in the marriage so the again this symbolism of marriage comes in that this is the body that the mare that you use to basically relatively you know cover a distance to go towards the the guru but the idea is it's this body that will help you uh sing reflect realize understand and then walk on that thing so that your your being while being alive you know unites with a kaunkar by do by actually becoming divine like that's how you actually you know merge and you know and then you become uh, a kaunkar like so the so the uh, body essentially basically told that you know harjiyo ko fandar in the context of the previous bodies uh, that body eyes all what the job was they said that harjiyo the remover of suffering basically placed uh, sorry jiyo the being the life in gufa the body cave baja and started the cycle of breath basically uh, equated to a air air instrument and uh, you know saying uh, a cycle was started and that's how your life came into being and then uh, some some people and just keep them engaged uh, in the maya uh, nine doors were uh, created so that we could engage with the outer world and it's up to us how we use those nine doors whether we use use them as our strengths or as weaknesses and to some through the you know gurdware gurdware lai bhavni ikna dasman da ard khaya not every but but some people were able to understand that everything around us is maya even though it's a kalpurks manifestation but then we have to you know uh navigate through these uh, nine doors 
uh, the you know this labyrinth of nine doors and uh, stay away from the effect of Maya. And those who through the experience of the Guru, Gurdwara Lai Pavni, who were taught to or explained or you know you know trained in developing that love for Ekankar, Lai Pavni, through experiencing Guru, Ekana Daswandikardwardkaya, some were basically thus toward the door to you know achieving bliss or the actual, you know, the, the the idea of you know, this figurative basandwar is used to just to show that that's how you evade the uh, the effects of maya and then ultimately unite with uh, ekankar so that were the uh, previous uh, four parties that we covered and we'll move to the penultimate and the last ultimate body of the body <coughs> it says so the Guru says, you know, this wisdom of Gurbani, uh, this vocabulary appeared in one of the previous bodies as well, that sings, uh, this wisdom of Gurbani that sings the praise of the divine has been imparted to you. Uh, this is the recipe for bliss. Now sing it at the door of the divine. This is the true song of happiness, praise. Uh, sing it at the at the door of the divine. Now, what is what does singing at the door at the house of the or the door of the true means to me? It means singing in awareness of in submission to the divine, singing in love of the divine, not in any other consideration. You know, there might be other considerations as as I talk about. You know, people treating Gurbani as something as as which uh, which fulfiller, even though it might be. Even though it is, but what is my primary goal? So to me, this line is saying, just remember, it's a sign of other love. Just sing it at the door. Basically, sing it at the door of Kaunka. You know, if we, it is, it is, it is the currency which is best used in its native country. You know, you know, if you try to use Indian rupee in the Canadian market or in the U.S. market, uh, you will face problems, and it's vice versa. Uh, so the point is to use it where it is meant to be used. Yeah, it is a way of saying that, you know, give up other considerations, pretenses, uh, avoid using it under other worldly considerations. Even though it might help you, it will help you achieve other things in life as well, which Gurbani, you know, very clearly mentions. But no, but sing it in love. And that should be your primary concern, primary uh, motivation. Other things will come after you. No, Jimmy, Guru Bani Chanda, read this with a Lagina Fere, Geno Jede Gurmokne, the Gurmoks who are Guru oriented, they don't even care about these worldly powers or treasures or wealth, but they run after the Gurmoks who are after this Guru, who are after the wisdom, who are after Ekonka's love, wealth, riches, everything come after, after them. They run after the Gurmoks, they must not run after the Gurmoks. So the point is to stay focused on making ekankar or love. Gavahata soila, you know, the next line, Gavahata soila kar sakya. If at all, ta, you know, ta gao, gavo ta. If at all, you have to sing, Gavaha soila, sing the song of happiness uh, in the in the house of the truth. The tha, where sada sachatya, where or for always true or truth is remembered. But reflection of the true can only happen, you know, if it pleases you. If it pleases you, it's, it's, it's again a question of grace. If it pleases you, only then I am capable of, you know, singing uh, that such as only the true rare ones, the ones whom upon whom you grace, grace only those are revealed this in you know, a form. Here such savna ka khasam hai. Uh, this truth is the master of all. Uh, it is something that will set you free if I if if you stay attached to it. But this bhakse sojan pawe again the idea of grace. Only the blessed ones receive it. Uh, whom this truth is bestowed upon, only they realize this. 
such a slow song. Says Nanak, true song of happiness, praise. Sing at the house or in the house of or true. So, so in this body, I know this idea of truth is, uh, uh, you know, truth is one uh, predom predominant idea, principle being discussed in this body repeatedly. Now, defining truth can be uh, a difficult task uh, as it has multiple connotations based on how it's used, it's, whether it's used in philosophy, whether it's used in mathematical equation, you know, or wherever. But if we look at the word within the context of Gurbani, uh, the most uh, simplistic way to define it uh, would be to, you know, contrast it with the word kood or chut. These two words used in Gurbani. Kood has been uh, used in Gurbani to connote things uh, that are either illusional, not real, or are, if they are distracting from the real purpose or are either temporary or have short life uh, span, something which is not permanent. So uh, now contrast that with uh, such, which is mostly used in uh, connection with uh, the divine, a conquer. And it connotes something that is for real, uh, not just an illusion or a perception, a mere perception. So such is something that is permanent, stable, ever existent. Uh, I think I had uh, earlier covered this, explained this in the context of the first looks of Jadi uh, in one of the sessions uh, where truth has been, I, I, I think I told the truth there are such jugaad, such defined in the context of ekankar as something which is permanent and ever existent. So truth that is beyond time, which is true not just now, but every, for every time. You know, uh, that's true. For instance, uh, it's right now it's day, but that's true only for about five, six hours. A few hours later, it'll be night. That truth will be gone. So that even that truth is uh, temporary. So that's not the truth that Gurbani refers to. So when Gurbani talks about such, it talks about eternal truth. There is ever existent, constant, stable. And uh, most of the times, uh, truth in that sense is used as a synonym for a Kalpuk. Just like Nam is used for the active facet of a Kalpur, but it's essentially a Kalpur, same way uh, truth is used. So in this context, it says, you know, identify, know that a Kalpur is uh, eternal and identify with that eternality. If you do that, you know, the idea of immortality came in one of the bodies. That's how you become immortal. And that's how when you merge with the Kankar, you also experience <coughs> With that we move to the last body. Uh, well, the Guru concludes the Pani with this body and then describes basically the state of mind, uh, you know, of those who have listened to the Guru's instructions and thus, you know, achieved bliss. So this is more of a description. Uh, uh, this body, in a way, is also a pointer to the things, you know. Uh, most essential for bliss. Uh, so let's see what those things are uh, in this morning. So the line starts with Anadu Suna Huvadapaki Ho Sagala Manorath Pure. Now this particular line can be you know, looked at uh, in two different ways. One is interpreting the very first word Anad as Anand, bliss. Then the meaning of the line becomes, you know, listen, oh, you know, fortunate ones. Uh, this is Anand, in which all the desires have been fulfilled. Once we experience that plus, all the desires we are considered to be fulfilled. The other way is taking Anand as Anhad. We covered this word multiple times in Guru Pani, in this Pani. Anhad, the unstruck sound. Then the line, if you take it as unstruck sound, which is Anhad, then the line would read as, listen to the unstruck sound, O oh, fortunate ones in which all desires have been fulfilled. Uh, now, if you look at the pattern followed throughout the Bani, uh, first line is, you know, often repeated at the at the end uh, to remind us of the original idea with which a body started or opened with. And the last line in this body talks about Anhad, the second last word in the last line of Anhad Tool. 
But and another fact that supports this assumption is that you know anand or bliss cannot be heard; it can only be felt or experienced. Whereas anhad, unstruck sound uh, can be heard, even though it's technically cannot be heard. It's again, um, you know, it's a it's a state of being. But when you literally dissect it uh, from a linguistic perspective, that's one of the arguments that you can, you know, that comes to the mind. And that assumption is also not uh, is no more relevant if we, you know, change the pause. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, this. It's quite tricky. For instance, if we change the pause and we say another break, pranaho vadapagi ho break. Then it becomes listen, O fortunate ones. Suno ho O fortunate ones, listen about anad or anhad, whichever the case might be. So in this case, both the meanings fit then. So there are so many, you know, permutations and combinations uh, within the grammatical uh, uh, framework. Not not going out of it, which I'll not discuss. But uh, these are some of the possibilities that we have. Uh, but so the point is that both of the uh, connotations fit in one of the one or the other interpretations, depending on how you take it. Then you may wonder why are we even discussing it? Well, the point is to you know appreciate the complexity of you know having to interpret Gurbani. Most of the times we interpret Gurbani with a lot of baggage and assumptions based on our prior conditioning or our own personal understanding of the vernaculars. Uh, or we try to understand Gurbani with the help of, you know, the already done interpretations by the six scholars, which is not a problem, which is encouraged. But if we, uh, the thing is, uh, we then we don't really appreciate the uh, the the beauty and also the difficulty in you know dealing with and interpreting the Gurbani uh, text and seeing how complex and how difficult it can get to you know. Uh, interpreted and also if we try to do it on our own uh, it could also lead to you know some new and very uh, interesting interpretations uh, so it's very important to develop an independent uh, perspective which of course not not uh, entirely open and free which doesn't consider anything else which should be grounded in gurmat perspectives there should be an understanding of what the uh, major gurmat framework is and then it should also take into consideration the language and the grammar. You cannot really ignore it and go haywire with your imagination. Uh, so if you have that background, it's always good to try to interpret uh, Gurbani on your own and see where it takes you. So I was just trying to show you the complexity of you know, interpreting Gurbani. So coming coming back to the body. So to me, the line says, you know, the sunoho vadapagi yosak. Sagal Manorapuri, listen to the unstruck sound uh, that has occurred because of the ananda, the bliss within, which uh, which I have realized because of the long journey that I've undertaken through walking on the instructions of the Guru, having submitted to the Guru. And now I'm in permanent ecstasy. And it feels like, you know, all my wishes have been fulfilled because of that ecstasy. I don't feel like asking for anything else. So that's how I look at it. Uh, next line says, Par Brahmu Prabhu Paya, now that the Supreme Master has been met, Utre Sagal Usure, all the worries, Visure, have gone away, have been shed from the body, from the mind, from the being. Du Kurog Santap Utre. Additionally, what has happened is pain, dukh, pain, suffering, rogue, diseases, Santap, uh, Anxieties or cravings. So santap comes from tap, which means literally fever or heat, symbolizing you know the anxieties or the cravings of the mind. So all the the, the phrase is saying that all the mental sufferings have you know departed. They have been washed away. And how exactly all this has been achieved? Suni sachivan tu krog santap utre. It is when I listen to the Guru utterance, the Guru's Sabbath. Sant, Sajan, Paesar, Se. Sant and Sajan, saints and friends alike. Paesar, Se. Happen to be, Sar, Se. All are in ecstasy. Now, they are full of rust. 
taste or the divine taste or the divine essence. Ras is interpreted in different ways. Ras literally means juice or taste. And it's also used to promote sense or divine essence. Pure Gurte Jani, but Santa Sajan Paisar say they have been in ecstasy. How? Pure Gurte Jani. And this ecstasy or taste has been known only through the Pura Guru, the perfect, complete. Now, what Sarah say, you know, it's a composite word, as, is, as I just mentioned. Uh, actual word is Ras, taste. And Sasa has been used here as, so, you know, I'm just trying to show you the beauty of how uh, things are modified to, even though language has its own, you know, limits, how that limited language is used to convey a feeling or an experience that cannot be actually conveyed through language. But still, you know, you have to appreciate the beauty and see how it's trying to convey that. Saras, it's an interesting combination. Saras, generally you're speaking any word which is prefixed with a sasa, uh, it makes that word positive. And if on on the other side, if generally speaking, not always, so you have to know the word stem. It's not that if there's a sasa in the beginning of a word, it's a prefix, always, no. If you know this is a prefix attached to a stem, word stem, then you can assume that it's making that word, generally speaking, a positive word. For And if there's a kaka, generally speaking, it it's basically, it, it turns a word into negative. Uh, for example, if I have, uh, you know, karam is a word actions or deeds. So if you add su karam, it makes it good actions. If you add ku karam, it means, you know, corrupt actions. Uh, similarly, put is put and, uh, your, your son or your progeny. So su is good progeny, ku is bad progeny. So ras means taste or a sense. And here the connotation is of joy uh, because of having you know obtained the essence and the addition of sasa makes the word even more you know positive implying that saints and friends are you know friends have been overtaken by joy they are overly joyous that's how you know it's changing the the, the feeling of the word now saras they are over joyous because of that play with those who are listening to those who are speaking of they have become puneet with pure and virtuous satgur reha pyar pure as a result of their engaging with the bani their consciousness you know has been overtaken by uh, the guru wisdom it is all guru guru from now and the guru is basically parpure parpur uh, comes from Paripuran, you know, the idea of something being bring full. Uh, it's used to also connote the idea within the Guru and Sahib, the way it is used is to connote perva pervasiveness of Kalpur. So uh, they go together, pervasiveness because the Kalpur is everywhere. So it also is uh, used in the connotation of being bring full or entirely packed, being, you know, everywhere, equally, yeah, you know. So the true Guru is brimfully pervading uh, their minds that's the point they are in ecstasy they have become pure you know all those worldly understandings of purity happiness ecstasy they've been just brought into consideration into context and the and the guru is saying they all happen only through the guru when the guru is in the consciousness when the guru is entirely pervading your mind and uh, that's when uh you know you become pure and that's when you actually Experience that this. Vinvant Nanak, praise Nanak, Gur Charan Lage, submitting to the Guru, Sabad Guru, Guru Wisdom, Vaji Anature. If we submit to the Guru's wisdom, the instruments of unstruck melody are, you know, will resound within you. You will experience this. Now that the Guru Wisdom is, you know, invading my consciousness, I have actually experience that vajay and that experience that unstruck sound that melody which is essentially bliss hence i am now aware i'm living in awareness of you know okay. and if you carefully look at all the six lines the first one describes the feeling of bliss another another sun over to pagi you listen you know uh, i felt this and my you know 
all my uh, wishes have been fulfilled and the second line tells that it happens because i have realized that you know par brahm prab paya you know achieved obtained received experience then from line 3 till the end 3 4 5 6 it is all guru in the consciousness uh, just pay attention to the later half of the third fourth fifth and you know sixth line uh in the third line suni sachi vani heard the gurus or heard the true or eternal utterance pure gur te jani realized or known through the perfect guru satgur reha par pure the guru is completely pervading the mind gur charan lage fallen it's in the middle in the sixth line fallen at the feet of the guru implying submitting to the guru wisdom guru so from third line onwards third fourth fifth sixth guru 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 uh, that should pretty much tell you what is the focus of this body what is at the center of the idea of or the experience of blissfulness uh, through the divine grace guru is met and then the guru gives wisdom of sabad and a sikh then absorbs in the guru sabad and then lives by that wisdom which basically results in a connection uh with the divine and there onwards it's all ecstasy anand so the entire body is focusing that the source of bliss if you really want to have uh happiness in life know that the only source of bliss is guru and let's take it back and connect to the very first body uh, where the bani started even what was the first line रामकली एक ओंकार सतगुरु प्रसाद रामकली मला तीजा आनंद पया मेरी माय सतगुरु में पाया यू नो मदर मदर आप कुड आइदर बी विद अ स्मॉल एम और कैपिटल एम यू नो दिस क्वेश्चन केम अप दैट्स इन कंसीक्वेंशियल हियर द पॉइंट इज ए ओ मदर ब्लेस हैपन एंड द गुरु एक्चुअली स्टार्टेड विद दैट इट वाज लाइक अ प्रोक्लेमेशन एंड देन द गुरु स्टार्टेड नरेटिंग व्हाई एंड हाउ आई फाउंड इट i uh, you know this happened and i found it in the eternal wisdom sati guru mein paya the sabad guru the guru's bani if we really want to experience that bliss the bani tells us the crux of the bani is that it's it lies in connecting with the guru uh, though i've just gave you a synopsis of the the body uh, but if you have to list the takeaways then they are listed here in front of you Uh, that bliss is in union with the kaunkar it's in merging uh, when one becomes divine like we will be in permanent bliss and the second major point is that one can become uh, divine like only through the guru uh, by living the wisdom of the gurbani reading it singing it understanding it walking on it when we walk on it and repeatedly walk on it when we repeatedly sing it when we repeatedly and uh, reflect on it we become what we repeatedly do and that is we become divine like because gurbani is divine praise divine essence and thus we by becoming divine like we become we merge or we unite with the source of the place and become blissful permanently eternally as the consequence of our merger uh with that we finish our bani uh i uh, will quickly go through major points uh that we covered in the bani and i've just uh, highlighted i've just taken out those those portions of bodies that uh contain those important points and in the next 15 20 minutes we'll try to go through all the all those quickly just to freshen up our memory and so that we know what are the things that the bani or the guru asked us to keep in mind in order to reach this point or the 40th body and the first body i just mentioned we started with guru prakrupa claiming that ananda bliss was found in the eternal wisdom so the source of bliss is wisdom clarity uh, which only comes through the guru the bani and how do you meet the guru you meet the guru in equipoise said satgurta paya sad city the point is that pretense is not going to work you have to the foundation of your relationship with the guru will have to be love genuine love love of longing you cannot pretend pretend have other love and at the same time 
pretend uh, try to fool yourself to be in love of uh, Sadhguru because what Guru asks you to do is walk on a path which is very unique and different from the rest because it asks you to give up the taste of Maya or the other loves and that when that happens that is only when you'll be working on it and that can only happen when you are truly in love of it that's why Sahaj is very important here and then in the second body, he talked about you know, my mind always remain with the reliever. Stay with the reliever, and that's how all your sufferings are, you know, are removed. Basically, the idea is if you are connected to Gurbani, if you are if you are submitted to the Gurbani, you will essentially move on a journey of becoming divine, like by constantly trying to stay in connection of connection with the the source of bliss and the source of the remove uh source of happiness who basically removes all sufferings that's what we learned in the first two bodies and then third and fourth major ideas you know so one thing interesting happening in this body body is that you know the idea of nam is the principle of nam is central in sikhi and Naam can be found in almost every page of Guru Granth Sahib. After Hari, Naam is, I think, one of the most uh, common used word. But this Bani didn't cover Naam too much, but covered the pointers to Naam uh, through different examples. So this is one of the only one of the I think couple of parties where Naam was explicitly mentioned in Bani. And so the idea is that essentially, what do you do? How do you connect? You know, body to talk about Naam. 43 tells you, uh, talk, talk about Akal Puruk, Hari. You can only connect with Hari through Hari's manifestation, the active facet, the manifest facet of Akal Puruk. We cannot know, know Akal Puruk. The only way we can uh, uh, con uh, connect with Akal Puruk is through experience, and we can only experience the manifest, the created uh, aspect of Akal Puruk, and that is Naam. And the third body basically encouraged us to connect with Naam. And which is again essentially Turbani, so that we could actually. And again, on body fourth, I said, you know, just make Nam the support of your, you know, life because it's Nam that will, you know, eliminate all your hungers and bring happiness. So idea is one love. If you connect with Nam, when you develop that love, one love, your other loves will be eliminated. Because the source of suffering is in other love. When that bond is broken, hunger hunger goes away, craving goes away, anxiety goes away, and that will bring happiness. Because when only one thing can reside in our heart and mind, Gurbani tells us, and that's one love. And when that happens, when we connect with Nam, which is the support, active support of life and creation, it eliminates hunger and it The next major point was within the fifth body itself that what happens is it all connect, it's all connecting. One love originates, and through that, five demons, the five propensities, the tendencies, human tendencies, they were controlled. They were not killed. They were controlled because they are the ones through which we engage with the Maya, the world around us. You know, it's like five uh, darwaje, five uh, nine doors. Similarly, five these uh, five tendencies help us interact with the world, make sense of it. We have to control. The point is, we need to control them. They shouldn't be controlling us. We should be driving the agenda. So when that happens, uh, the the thorn of death or the fear of death is removed by virtue of you know we merging with the work and anaktaha sukhwa. When we are able to control these five, uh, you know, uh, use vices, tendencies, human tendencies, then what happens? We are able to effectively, consciously close the nine doors. And then within us, anhadvaje, the unstruck sound plays the idea that happiness. This is how you, when you disengage, you keep engaged in a detached manner with the world, but your love is, true love is a conquer. That's when permanent state of place, you know, comes about. Next major uh, point was in uh, 47th, that, you know, everyone's talking about, you know, if you're, you know, if you finally 
you know, started looking around, you'll notice that there are so many people sitting, opening, having opened their shops, trying to sell this, uh, you know, fancy ideas of how the world is, uh, you know, how it should be, how, you know, Anand is achieved, how to live a life. Anand, Anand, sabko kahe Anand, but know that the real Anand can only be known through the eternal Guru. And kar kirpa kilev kate gyan anjisare, when you, through the Guru, put the coal of wisdom in your eye, that is when, you know, your all actions, kilvik, are eradicated. And that's when wisdom informs the individual. Androhojan ka, and what is the key? What is the criteria? It has to ultimately break your craving of the other taste. Only androgen ka mohokita, then ka sab di satya soarya. You know, the soap of sab can only help. Basically, it does take away the dirt, but the idea is that once that soap is applied, the dirt will go away. But if the dirt is still there, you know, sometimes the dirt is really, the, the grease is really thick. You have to apply soap multiple times. The point is, both things do not stay together. Soap removes the dirt. And if the dirt is still there, the idea if there there is attachment to uh, the the other love, then your internal won't be really it isn't really hasn't been really uh, cleansed, and you cannot really experience or I cannot really experience bliss. It happens only when sabda satcha, the true sabda, takes care of you. Uh, you know it eradicates the the internal love or craving for the other taste. And that's when this state is bliss when the other love has been eradicated by virtue of connecting with the true guru not the the utterances grounded in you know ignorance or other love when you pay attention to the guru's wisdom that's when internally your love of other is broken that is the state of actual love Know that two loves cannot exist at the same time within your heart. That's what the Guru Mahan tells us. Only when Andromajanka Motuta from within your attachment to the other love has been eradicated. That only that state is when you can you know you know claim to have actually experienced it. Otherwise, it could be any you know fleeting movement. You know, you might think that it's, it, it was there. It could do some anything else but that. So, with that, uh, the next major point was covered in body eight and ten. Baba Jastu De Sui Jan Pava. That it's the grace, essentially the grace uh, that helps an individual find the right path, submit to the Guru. Without grace, nothing happens in seeking. And the next uh, major thing was in body ten. And it, it it addressed the mind, the fickle mind, the clever mind, and it said, "A man chinchlao, clever or fickle mind, just know that cleverness. No one has found the divine or through cleverness. Mm -hmm. Cleverness you only use when you are something else, but you're trying to pretend something else. That might work with each other, but not with a kalpurk. A kalpurk is very wise." It's basically cleverness is a sign of us being in other love, being enticed by Maya. When we actually want to continue to keep engaged with the tastes that this world has to offer. But at the same time, we want to pretend that, you know what, we are in love with. Uh, uh, there's a very famous Kavali sung by, that reminds me of Nusrat and where it says, you know, uh, Dil mein hai khwai shay uro jannat. You know, the mind craves for damsels of the heaven. And then we also have our zahir mein shauk e ibarat. I have shock. Shock is when you have, a, it's just like a hobby. You have also kept a hobby as a hobby of love of the divine. You cannot have love of the divine as a hobby. And at the same time, you know, craving for worldly things. That's what is essentially this is that. No, our love is somewhere else, but we're trying to claim that our love is divine. But that's cleverness. And a cleverness does not work with a garbage. And that's pretend. That's anything else but a state of sin. As long as that state is there, sahaj is not there. As long as sahaj is not there, we have not met 
or invited the guru wisdom so that's the point so divine love and other love cannot coexist that's what we learned in the chanchala because chanchala being clever or being fickle is a symptom of being in other love so that's what pony tell atan uh, told us e man pyara tu sada sach samale and uh, you know it basically encouraged us body level to you know always stay connected to and remember the such and told us that you know what ek kutum tu je dekhda even though you might you might truly really love this kutum this family these relationships around you just know that nothing will go with you the only thing that will go with you is satguru ka updesh sun to listen to the the instructions the teachings of the guru hove tera hove tera naal only that instruction is the one that will help you in life there is the only thing that will go with you nobody will. nobody will. nobody is yours just know that that's what the guru told you like it or not or not body then we next major point was covered in body 13 surnar munjan amrit khos the idea of immortality came in I mean, all major faith traditions talk about it everyone's looking for everyone fears death physical death everyone's looking for immortality in one way or the other and the guru told us that immortality is received from the guru and immortality is enshrining ekankar in the heart immortality is in union merger with ekankar that merger that uh, union with ekankar when we become a part of the eternal that's when we when we become eternal there is no immortality in our physical separate existence as a mortal uh, this body will Uh, be destroyed. So for us, Amrit is Nam. Amrit is Bani. Amrit, anything that's eternal is Amrit, which doesn't die. Die, obviously, uh, as a as a logic. And what is that? That is a karma. Wisdom is a karma, and we are asked, asked to encourage to you know attach to engage with. the immort all the immortal facets of akal purk either it's love of akal purk wisdom of akal purk or praises of akal purk when we do that we become one with akal purk and that's how we achieve amrit or immortality pagta ki chaal ran now what happens once that love has been sowed in the heart lifestyle becomes different that's when we are gen when we are genuinely in love with ek onkar Our love of the other has disappeared. Love, love, ankar, taaj tishna, bahut nahi bolna. They give up, you know. They renounce greed, egoism, desire because these are worldly, worldly tendencies. When you are in other love, they, you don't really care about these things, you know. So, uh, people who are in actually love, what is the sign? How are they like? The other, their other love has died. Uh, their desires, their wishes. hari vasna smani their vasna their desires their wishes essentially merge with the conquer that's the sign of love if someone asks you what is the sign of love this is the sign of love in body 15th uh it gave kat kirpa ch naam like se har har sada tya this is very important point you know naam is the central principle of sikhi the question arises where do you get an understanding of how do you connect with akal purukhs you know active manifest the only way to do that is which is now is through guru only the guru actually shows you uh, makes you aware of that aspect and then then makes you see it around you and that's how that is how guru gives you now and connects you with so the only source of now and its connection is akal as for this body told us and pavit of way sajana then if you are in connect and that connection so the idea of purity also is just like immortality the idea of pure purity is quite a uh, bit discussed in religious circles especially you know it says that only if you are pure you can be spiritually you know inclined or elevated but the gurbani says the opposite of that gurbani says your outer physical condition does in you know, our determine your internal state if you are connected that's when you are pure it just it just turns the thing on its head that you it just it changes the transforms the whole idea of purity it says that pavitra hoye se jana only those individuals are pure 
who are connected living in remembrance or awareness is real purity so if you want to claim to be pure ask yourself are you connected is the guru brimfully pervading your mind is is the guru you know pervading your consciousness ask that. If you're connected if you're in are in remembrance constant remembrance i am i'm pure if i'm not i'm not pure uh, in the body 18th it covered you know the idea of sahaj kin 41 and uh, body 18 covered sahaj army sahaj na object by our own ignorant actions sahaj cannot arise you know so how does sahaj arise wash the dirty mind with sabad man to waho sabd lago by attaching your mind so you know the first line said rana pya mai mai sadguru mein paya sadguru ta paya sahaj se thi guru is found or met through sahaj but the second line is saying there is actually no uh, other way of achieving sahaj it's again through the guru keep engaged with the guru essentially sahaj is also uh, also arises or you attain sahaj only by continuing to engage in engage with the guru so if you engage with the guru that's how you you know you develop that sahaj within you that equipoise and that's how sadguru is met and then this idea of just like purity you know this idea of um you know i'm good at heart i mean even though i do not look like i'm really in love with the kalpurk but i'm good at it just know this and the guru says uh, it's okay that's fine but the question i want to ask is i don't believe in first the second third fourth fifth sixth option where i'm good within i might not look very you know great from outside or whatever you know this idea doesn't work with gurbani it says you have to have love within and if you have love within it will show it will manifest that's the problem. if it is not showing it's probably because you are not in love if you are in love pagta ki chal nali your style will be unique you will be different it will show it will manifest your claim doesn't uh, make any sense what matters is uh, does the guru constantly dwell in your in my consciousness jin kaha nanak jin man nirmal sada rahe guru nal who always stay with the guru whose consciousness is always attached to the guru they are the ones who are nirmal that's what the guru means so that's the criteria of being pure uh, that's the uh, criteria of being nirmal without the blemishes okay uh next major thing was in body 22 dekho guru te vimukh hove ban sadgur mukt na paave फिर मुक्त पाए लाग चरणी सदगुरु सब सुनाए देर इज नो फ्रीडम देर इज नो लिबरेशन देर इज नो डिलीवरेंस इट इज ओनली इन रिफ्लेक्शन रिफ्लेक्टिंग ऑन द इटरनल विस्टम व्हिच इज शवल एंड एक्ट मे ट्राई ऑल द डोर्स ऑल द शॉप्स ऑल द कच्ची वाणीज यू वांट टू ट्राई जस्ट नो दैट यू डोंट हैव एनी ऑप्शन यू मे ट्राई एट योर ओन रिस्क एट योर ओन एक्सपेंस इफ यू रियली वांट टू दैट्स फॉर बॉडी 22 again body 24 and 27 pretty much talk about the same thing and you know sadguru bina aur kachi hai bani kehnde kachche sunde kachche you might hear you know different people i just talk about it that their understandings their utterances their teachings are half based because they are rooted in ignorance they are rooted in other love power money wealth something else is going on there it's only the guru who is eternally connected or is a manifestation of a heart and only if you uh, connect with the with the eternal trans is when you all other trans knowledges which are half it they just go away from your mind which because they are a manifestation of other love and once you are in love of uh, basically you attach you repose faith in submit to the eternal wisdom of the guru that is when uh, your love of maya goes away but most of the claim they are actually essentially stuck in the love of maya and that's what was in a way repeated in the 27 body simrit shastra pun paap chal there are so many there is uh... okay so there was a disturbance okay so simrit there are so many religious texts simrit shastra pun paap bichhar de ta sar na jani you know there are so many texts they talk about what's good what's bad but nobody really understands anything 
Why? Because tihi kuni sansar pram sutta sutyaram. Because the word is stuck in the three qualities of Maya, relativities of the life. They haven't really risen above the pull of Maya and connected with the absolute, and that's why uh, they are kache. They are rooted in ignorance. They are rooted in other other worldliness. Forty twenty ninth. Then Guru Sahib took an example of you know this idea of Maya is coming from the previous twenty seventh forty. Uh, you know twenty fourth and twenty seventh forty. Now this is explained through an example of how the child, the embryo in the womb, develops hung upside down in extreme heat. You know. Uh, even there, Kalpuk takes care. So the point is, figured it's it's understood that the the child or the embryo is in connection with the Kalpuk. It's basically broken, you know, away from the effect of Maya within the womb. But as soon as it you know, steps out, live the the that that connection broke. Maya took over, and then other love, you know, grew. Uh, so the the body is what the, these bodies told us that the Maya, the effect of Maya. The pull of Maya is pervasive. It's very strong, and just know that it's also a creation of a conquer. There are no two axes in this world. Everything happens in the hukam of, in the by the order of, by the will of a kalpuk. And Maya is also a creation of uh, a kalpuk, a conquer. Uh, but if someone through prasadi jinna live lagi the last night, but those who are able to invite the guru's wisdom in life, they are again able to. Re-establish that broken connection, live churki, and that's how they are able to develop that, redevelop that one love, and then move away the from the pull of the Maya, and that's one way how you experience bliss or you move towards experiencing bliss. And then, then the Bani, you know, basically moved to you know covering all the different parts of the body and giving them specific, clear instructions as to what you need to do. Specifically, your tongue. You specifically, your eyes, or you specifically, your ears. This is what you need to do. You need to see in the speak, or you need to praise the akapu. You need to see the divine everywhere. You need to develop the perspective. You need to listen to the sachi bani, and then, with your coordination with each other, develop this understanding and this love of this taste of akapu. That's how uh, you are able to. And you know the next line. It gave a uh, next part. It gave an example of how you know the ninth you created everything in this uh, body. Ninth door, nine doors were kept for us to interact with the world, uh, with the Maya, uh, make sense of it, but in a way that we we could you know find a meaning for our life, our purpose for our life, for our life. It wasn't meant. Uh, but so the point is, it's up to us whether we want to use that as our weakness or as our strength. But it, uh, it's left up to us. So if there is Gurdwara life of me, if through the Guru's grace or through experiencing the Guru, we are able to establish that love, and our rasna, our netra, our sravan, eyes, ears, tongue, they all, in the love of the divine, are able to establish, uh, are able to constantly stay in praise of a kalpa. That's when the third, or sorry, the tenth door is shown to us, figurative door, and that's how, that's when we are able to re-establish the connection which was in the previous two strands. So the same thing is continuing in the last eight to ten forties. And finally, in the fourteenth forty, we discovered what did we learn? We learned that, you know, once we have broken this, once we have developed a a uh, love with of the conquer once through the once we have submitted to the guru and we have taken now we have broken we have we have been able to overcome the pull of maya we've closed the nine figure doors and that's how developed a love of the conquer and that's when when our love of the other worldly tastes has gone away that's the true sign of uh, and when that happens this is the state that you the fortieth body that is Prince Jivan. You constantly stay engaged with the internal wisdom. You are able to make sense of the world around you, and you are in ecstasy. And that ecstasy is experienced pure Guru Again, only through the Guru wisdom. And then 
what and that's that's a sign of you know the uh, the eternal guru having you know pervaded your consciousness and that's only happens when bin vant nanak nanak prays nanak submits nanak bats only happens if we submit to the guru's that's when vaje and ature the the one 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 experiences bliss bliss eternal form and bliss in life uh so that's what uh my understanding of the bani is uh with that we conclude the uh the 11 uh sessions of gurbani there'll be one more session on uh nan sahib where any called the uh, the marketing head of uh sikri will share her personal experiences of uh our connection with uh, with this bani i would like to take a few uh, manvinda do you think we have time to take uh, uh, discuss some of the questions that were put here yes definitely i think we could sure. um extend the session for maybe 10 yeah, more sure. minutes just so we can answer the questions um, so some of some of the questions that i already had was you know there were three major questions that came one of the questions was you know uh, doesn't sik mean sanmukh this idea of sanmukh so sik sanmukh ho it came you know sanmukh so the question was does being a sikh not mean sanmukh by default uh why a person still is not uh, san sanmukh and still a manmukh so if you are the point is that if you identify and relate to a certain idea or ideology it doesn't necessarily mean that you are dedicated to it or you are living by it uh, similarly being a sikh is a very you know generic and open ended question statement for instance i could myself uh, in i could call myself a sikh and nobody would question that uh, there's no point questioning but the point is am i really living in uh, living by the instructions of the guru is the guru pervading my consciousness as the last body that's the real question you know it is when the guru is pervading my consciousness as a say that's when i have become sanmukh i might be claiming to be a sikh and that's just fine but when i actually uh, explicitly start listening to the guru's instruction walking on them that's when i become sanmukh Uh, other than that one of the major questions that many people asked was related to the idea of liberation mukti jhon transmigrations live, you know living and dying i wouldn't uh, you know read out those specific uh, questions separately but the essentially the the concern in all this question is to try to understand is there actually an afterlife is there heaven or hell is there life is are is the trans migration and the question is does gurbani believe in that well i have no answer my understanding says based on how the tone of the gurbani that most of the times because guru is engaging with the population that deals in this vocabulary who believes in this gurus have used this vocabulary as a carrot and a stick uh, there could be an afterlife there could not be an i, I don't know but my understanding says if i'm conjecturing i'm already living in a space that's not where where the guru does not want to me to be me or wants me to be in it's uh, the idea is if i am not supposed to bother about what will happen after the life because the guru basically is trying to train my mind to be in present now here and now it's about gurbani and sikhi is about fixing what's wrong with your life here and now and if we do that uh if there is awareness or consciousness in our mind my understanding tells me these things really do not matter whether they actually exist or not that's not the focus of gurbani gurbani doesn't uh, certify or uh, you know give out certificates whether a certain thing exists or does not exist. it just uses those examples to drive home or hammer in a point uh regarding our connection or our real purpose in life so i would just leave it at that open ended uh there was another question regarding uh uh as per gurbani is everyone's purpose in life same next question how do we differentiate that the path we are walking on is not due to our ego but guru's instruction so that's a little tricky or interesting question Uh, well every but that's what gurbani tells us that everyone's life purpose is same we need to realize this uh 
I think the answer to the later question, well, how do we know whether we are walking on the Guru's instruction or on, under, uh, under the influence of our own ego? I think the answer lies in the end result. What does that, uh, how does it make you feel, whatever you're doing? Uh, is that feeling lasting? Does uh, that feeling or understanding or your life path offer you consistency in terms of feelings, perspectives, and outlook? And are all those perspectives and outlooks are consistent with each other? Are they telling? Are they offering you happiness? Uh, uh, or are are they are they giving you a sense of, of fulfillment which is eternal, which is not? temporary grounded grounded in a certain moment which is like continuous that those are the questions that need that you need to ask is there oneness in my perspective are these all things coming together and helping me solve the uh, solve the problems of life if they're not then probably we are uh, working under the influence of our own ego if we are if all these things are gelling they're offering solutions to our problems then probably Chances are we are working on the goals and structure. Uh, that is all I had. There's another question. Uh, what is the difference between Tothapad and Dasandwar? That's again a technical question. Uh, they're not, uh, it's that there's some terms used for the ultimate spiritual experience used in different faith traditions, and Gurbani is just referring to those. Uh, sometimes they are coming from the same faith tradition, and that's how they are connected. But sometimes different terms are coming from different faith traditions offering discussing about different paths then they're not matching but then they are figuratively just talking about uh, the ultimate state so they could be or they could not be it's just a pointer to the ultimate spiritual experience of a Kalpana. yeah so these are the questions that i have any other questions that are available we can cover those great yes so we did have a couple questions um coming in from the audience right now um, one of them was, uh, from the word comes destiny written on one's forehead. Does this mean that through one's devotion and good deeds, one can change the destiny? And this is from Inder from Long Beach, California. Uh, what we get is a uh, destined or is written on our forehead, you know, you know, uh you know written from the origin yeah that idea is very common in gurbani and it's uh it's also related to some of our grace but what gurbani tells us if there is an element of uh uh will personal will if we are able to exercise those and are able to connect with the with the with the with the gurbani there are so many numerous lines in gurbani that tell us tell us that all our previous negative uh, deeds or actions are washed away it's essentially a question of are we able to connect with gurbani effectively if we are then probably we could evade the previous negative uh, writs written great uh, we also had a couple other questions these two were kind of similar so i'll give them to you at the same time so Jotkar from Toronto asks, is bliss and connection the same thing? And then Manpreet from Richmond VA is asking, is there is being connected the same as having faith? Having faith, okay. You cannot connect to something you don't have faith in. You would not want to connect to something you don't have faith in. So yeah, it's sort of similar. In the, and the first question was, is bliss and connection different? Well, connection is a state. I would say if you have to technically understand this, and the point is, you know, this applies as it's the same question that uh, we covered under the transmigration thing. These are all technicalities. When we try to understand things intellectually, these questions, you know, crop up. I would say that uh, if you have to understand it, connection is some bliss is something that you experience by virtue of being in connection. That's how you take it. Uh, so if you are in connection, if you are united, if you are merged, Gurbani tells us you will be in bliss. So connection is that state in which you experience bliss. Beautiful. And the last kind of quick question I guess we had was, do you recite Anand Sab early or late in the day or once or more? Is it for me? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess perhaps okay. a recommendation, but also maybe uh, in regards to 
your recitation practice? Well, uh, if it's related to the, if the question is related to whether it's a Vani of Midnam or whether you should be sing, uh, singing it, uh, Rath Maratha does not include that, but uh, usually it's sung in the morning. It's a Ramkali rag. Uh, we covered the time of, uh, it's, the, it's the first quarter of the day. That's when it's technically sung, but you are encouraged to read Bani, Bani as much as you want, as much as you can. And you're free, you're encouraged to read Gurbani anytime and all the time, includes evening as well. So there's no rest uh, restriction of rocks, give you a certain context of the mood and the time, but you're encouraged to sing any Bani all the time. I hope that answers. I think so, yes. Lovely. Thank you so much, Sandra Paul, for taking time to answer everyone's questions. Thank you, everyone, for participating, uh, for coming in and engaging with questions week after week. Um, yeah, we're so pleased to have you join us uh, every week. Please note, like always, that a recording of this live class will be available within 24 hours. And don't forget to tune in for the last week of this live course with Inigor, Gore, who will be sharing a special personal reflection detailing her relationship with the Bani of an Ansaib Sikhi as a lived experience. And as always, we are hosting bi-weekly live webinars. Our next one is on Sunday, Ju July 19th, where we explore questions such as, what are the modern applications of bhakti and shakti? How do we maintain a true connection to all the strength, internal and external, that Sikhi affords us? Join us in conversation with historians and academics, Jaspreet Ball, Vineet Singh, and Harleen Gore, as we look at the theory and application of the concept in our modern journeys. And lastly, don't forget to tune in to The Sick Cast, a podcast produced by Sikri, where we explore the various issues and events affecting Sikhs worldwide. Thank you for joining in. Today's live class will be ending now. Bye, Guji Kalsa. Bye, Guji Kifate. Bye, Guji